Good day, everyone. We would like to welcome the participants of the IASC Summer University in 2020 in this uh, changing times we live today. So we are teaching you uh, via online. I would like firstly introduce my colleague, Akos Jacobi from the Craft Research Group of the uh, My name is Marianne Sabo and we will hold the presentation about the initiative in our research program, the Creative Cities and Sustainable Regions Cooperative Strategy. So, first of all, I would like to provide a brief introduction why it is crucial to deal with um, regional issues nowadays. This uh, COVID situation has called the attention that how many regional matters determine our well-being across the world. And parallelly uh, to these challenges, the di different kinds of resources which are embedded or, or could be found uh, in regional systems are really important to uh, assess and, and uh, evaluate the well-being of the inhabitants who are moving. So uh, basically, we face this um, kind of challenge, this phenomenon, the population retention. And uh, we all know that this uh, population retention capacity of various regions, like uh, great metropolises or smaller towns, are really uh, different. And uh, since we would like to evaluate and assess those kind of factors which influences the different kind of uh, webbing patterns of inhabitants, it is really important to introduce and use um, appropriate tools and methodologies in order to uh, have a real view on these issues. So basically, uh, we could observe regions as um, special characteristics of social economic spaces characterized by special production structure of all ownership um, forms. Uh, for instance, what is the distribution of uh, small and medium-sized enterprises and uh, great uh, transnational ones? Uh, it's an important uh, issue. How about the population patterns? Uh, are the societies an aging one, or are we coping with how we can uh, deal with the growing uh, infants in the not growing infants number in the regional system? It could be a challenge to how to provide enough food and um, and uh, effective education. Uh, the third one, basically, it's uh, very common uh, that we have to deal with um, in the European uh, circumstance that we are with the employment uh, concentration as well as governmental um, institutions and uh, how the responsiveness and uh, speed of the different kind of um, governmental answers to, to different uh, uh, challenges like the COVID or, or um, challenges in line with the um, SDGs of the uh, United Nations is really crucial. So fundamentally, we could state that regions as social, cultural, political, and economic interaction systems. So it is really important that the different kind of actors and inhabitants in given region interact with each other. We could um, know that uh, nowadays in the globalized economies, we could find uh, those cu customers uh, who became service providers. And now we introduce the phenomena of uh, prosumers because uh, customer could be an Airbnb provider or could uh, provide uh, different services via um, internet-based uh, platform. And it's really important that uh, these kind of interaction systems, the effectiveness, influence the well-being of the inhabitants. And now the regional systems really face several challenges. On the other hand, we could uh, state that 
this regional development processes is far from smooth and uh, well predictable um, processes for providing wealth and, and um, accumulation of different kinds of uh, uh, goods and, and uh, institutions and, and different um, resources. Uh, it is the form of interruptions and it is the mean of interruptions and periodic changes. Uh, like the innovation process, they are too um, fast and, and uh, they uh, influence the development of the regions. So if we think about various regions in Europe or across the world, it would be a question that how we can assess those functions which are uh, essential and influential for the regional development and well-being of the inhabitants. And uh, one of the most common uh, system in regional science describing the main social geographical functions of the regions uh, is driven from the Munich School from Pasch that basically the first influential uh, factor which must be provided in a region as a social economic interaction system is the work. Then comes the living conditions for the workers and their families. Then after, due to the optimum threshold and, and uh, population concentration, the different kinds of services, Inter, uh, including the education and learning possibilities of the region. And uh, for sure, for the national identity preservation and, and have a common sense of belonging, uh, culture is really essential and influential in this uh, system. We all know that uh, this kind of regional system would be really uh, different in terms of how the different uh, services and institutions are allocated um, regionally. So the transport, the communication possibilities is really important. Then after the leisure and time activities, and, and finally, how the local community uh, could operate, how the people can meet each other, what kind of forms um, are common in the, the communicate community in order to uh, communicate and get in touch, basically. And it would be interesting that uh, there are so many initiatives which aims to assess and evaluate the different kind of uh, well-being patterns. And, uh, after the reviewing um, a few of these uh, measurement methods, it's so important that uh, they all resemble to the basic uh, geographical functions, but they put much emphasis on specific factors and after and, and some of them uh, call the attention to other factors. So it's really a um, nice view have to, to have a, a view on the combination of the factors they consider influential in terms of the inhabitants' well-being. We have those um, systems which um, assesses countries and, and, uh, and regions, basically, and other ones are suitable and, and dedicated for uh, cities. We will, have, we will review some of them. The first and most common one, um, most of you perhaps have known about as a GDP alternative indicator. This is the Human Development uh, Index, which um, basically considers three main categories, which is influential for the proper and the valuable um, pattern of an inhabitants of a people. So this is the long and healthy life, expressed by the life expectancy at birth, the knowledge and the decent standard of uh, living. Other indicators put much emphasis on the natural environment. Basically, uh, this is the uh, effect of the phenomena environmental economics that our economy must be based upon the fact that uh, 
the economy is rooted on the, in the natural environment. So the Happy Planet Index uh, integrates the ecological footprint into the calculation, besides that being a life expan expectancy and inequality uh, measures. In case of the OECD countries, the house life uh, measurement is really uh, important. They include Besides the health and subjective well-being and and uh, and um, social interactions and the, and natural capital, the social interaction. So it's really important that these indicators is really put emphasis on the connectedness of the society. The quality of uh, living a survey by the Merker uh, really considers. Uh, many uh, issues, but it's really important that it integrates all relevant fields have been um, mentioned before, but it put emphasis on the political and the social environment too, that uh, the natural resources, the um, circumstances of how different inhabitants could uh, meet their um, could satisfy their needs is really important but the political stability and the social cultural environment is really important uh, this is for internationally um, survey and cities and finally uh, concerning the quality of life measures uh, some uh, city um, driven safety focused uh, assessment, the Global Livability e Index, which put emphasis on the safety and infrastructural uh, patterns of the cities, the Sustainable City uh, Index, uh, which aims to have a balance between the natural capital and uh, social interaction and, the, and put emphasis on the profitable uh, firms' activities. And, and finally, the Winnipeg Quality of Life Indicators, which introduces um, the sense of belonging, the importance, how people feel about their neighborhood, their uh, settlements, basically. So the craft concept is relying on the comprehension of these commonly used uh, measures and uh, the creative city sustainable region uh, concept, as you will see uh, from the uh, presentation, uh, is based some based upon some new approaches. So basically, it's an integrated framework of uh, analyzing different kinds of fields mentioned before, but it considers the individual and community interests in in a region. And it's really put emphasis on considering uh, longer uh, time periods for the um, interventions. And it put emphasis on the creation of social, economic, and ecological uh, sustainability. And in order to do that, it relies on hard factors from statistics and, um, and uh, different kind of uh, surveys and from um, soft factors, and we will talk about it. And now I give the word to my colleague, Akos. Yes, so let me continue uh, with the craft program, which is uh, one of the three pilot regional development policies of the Hungarian government. And it aims at the sustainable development of small and medium sized towns. So we don't deal with large uh, scale uh, processes. Uh, in contrast to conventional uh, regional and city development practices, as mentioned previously, or for example, in contrast to the Green Cities Index, the Sustainable Cities Index, or Creative Cities Index, and others, uh, the approach of the craft program integrates the so called soft factors. Uh, you may think about the culture, identity, heritage. And their efficient management with hard factors such as infrastructure, energy, communication networks, and economic sustainability. So uh, this is one kind of an integrated uh, view of the uh, topic. But another novelty of craft is to identify and utilize synergies of interdependencies among rural and city development factors. 
So that's uh, properly revealing the full range of conditions required for the implementation of new complex regional development strategies of cities and their rural environments. Uh, the craft index uh, builds on three important potentials. Uh, the craft index measures the potential of a region to develop its economy and competitiveness by considering the quality of life of its inhabitants, uh, workers, local producers, as well as the quality workforce requirements of companies and sustainability. As you may see, uh, the craft approach incorporates three groups of qualities or potentials. First one is the creativity and or innovation potential, what we consider the ability of knowledge production. The second one is about social and connection capital, social relationships, network potential, and the connectedness. And the third one deals with uh, sustainable potential. So to uh, make it in a whole framework, I will give back, give back the words to Marianne. So as previously mentioned, the core essence of, the, uh, of our methodology that is uh, relying on the main stakeholders. Uh, basically, uh, it's commonly used model in management and uh, regional sciences, the triple helix uh, method, like development initiatives uh, must be relying on the common understanding of universities, businesses, and, and the government. However, uh, this approach has been improved because nowadays we can see that due to the globalization and how the different kind of um, circumstances, the spread of the ICT empowers people to become um, service providers in their neighborhoods or in the cities. So we must integrate the society uh, into this uh, uh, triple helix uh, model. And, uh, and besides uh, their importance, it's really important that uh, this kind of triple helix and multiple helix model could uh, be as a, an engine of the um, uh, region and regional development. Uh, basically, it's um, if the different um, and different agents of the um, region could understand each other and make decisions concerning about their well-being, concerning the business opportunities and the different kind of uh, well-being patterns uh, in the regions it could be a really important role model and effective, com um, effective cooperation uh, among them. And if we see, we can see the different uh, indicator subsets of the uh, craft methodology we use. It might be a question how to use this kind of methodologies in practice. And uh, for sure, uh, we have selected those uh, indicator subsets, which has to be evaluated. And uh, some of them are widely used in different kinds of evaluation indicator system, like the economic, uh, social vitality, population matters of the region, the culture, natural and built environment, has education, training and learning, uh, network con connections and uh, different kinds of governmental issues. But we have integrated component which is basically missing from the existing uh, indicator system, and this is the heritage. Both the material, the, the built heritage, and and both the immaterial. And uh, now I give the back the word back to Akosh, and he will explain the potentials more sophisticatedly. Right, so uh, as mentioned before, an advantage of the craft methodology is that it integrates both the soft factors, so the culture, identity, heritage, and their efficient management uh, with the hard factors such as infrastructure, energy, and others. 
So this complexity of the development uh, view should be accompanied with multidisciplinarity, which in turn formulates the needs to have something as an objective integrative element. It seems uh, location and local people could be the nodes of interrelated factors. Actually, this overlaps the craft idea which identifies and utilizes synergies of interdependencies among rural and city development factors, thus uh, properly revealing the full range of conditions required uh, for the implementation of new complex regional development strategies of cities and environment. So the original triple helix and the further developed multiple helix models or the engine as mentioned previously by Marian uh, of the craft approach uh, were from the beginning multidisciplinary by integrating varied indicator subsets uh, describing the economy, uh, the social vitality and others. And the road to multidisciplinary was already laid when the detailed components of the craft approach have been formulated dealing with topics uh, as you may see here. So these are the measurement graph potentials. Uh, for example, the economic activity, the support of uh, the local economy, the economic situation of residents, the entrepreneurship, sense of security. You may feel that they are more concrete, trust or uh, responsibility, local identity. They cannot be measured directly but they are uh, uh, physical parts or, or uh, human parts really uh, important to measure. In practice, this uh, multidisciplinary, multidisciplinarity is handled by the compilation or integration and analysis of multiple data sets, which are, let's say, pictures taken of the people from dip different angles. So in other words, we shoot with data, I hope you understand. <laughs> and we make multidimensional observations to draw a better image of the human. So additionally, uh, these different viewpoints or data sets when stacked on top of each other can increasingly represent the people's complex nature and thus the multidimensional character of the observed region. So therefore we created uh, um, so-called craft index, or this is a complex indicator approach based on experiences of multivariable and location of our examinations on regional development differences like uh, Faluvegi, Rodriguez, and Franco, and others. An obvious solution for empirical validation was to create a composite data set for spatial units. Well, in our case, for Hungarian settlements and micro regions, so local area uh, units net uh, uh, levels two and one. And with this methodology, we aimed to combine all effects the indicators represent, namely value outcomes expected to mirror both viability, creativity factors, as well as welfare components and others. So the composite index was calculated uh, by the uh, directional reader standardized mean methodology. And the index can be interpreted finally as an experiment for the complex characterization of the creative and lively socioeconomic environment. So its development is realized uh, continuous, uh, uh, by, by the continuous expansion and or correlation of uh, uh, and correction of uh, new data sources. So we are still developing this methodology. Uh, this is one of our first results. So the uh, spatial pattern of the composite index values from Hungary and micro regions are presented on this map. So the regional scale map uh, reflects definite spatial distribution of high, medium and low values across the country. So the, the red areas are the higher uh, uh, craft uh, quality areas and the green ones have uh, the less potential. So this map signifies that the spatial structure of the viable, creative, sustainable society is geographically not random. If you are familiar with the geography of Hungary, of course, you may realize where Budapest is located. It's not surprising that the Budapest region has great potentials, but the 
North Transdanubian region, so the northwestern part has also quite good values uh, according to our calculations. But we went uh, to go into details. Uh, we, we tried to go into details to find some local explanations and to find the role of the so-called genius loci, which means the spirit of place. So to confirm, the, uh, to confirm the role of local motives, a more detailed picture was needed to be drawn. So consequently, after determining the regional performance values, we aimed at validating the integrated approach of creative and viable environment on local scale. And this experiment was done in the southwestern parts of Hungary uh, with a sample area of approximately 30 uh, uh, settlements. Here again, the red areas are referring to better performance and the uh, green ones refer to, to lower uh, creativity potentials. But it's not surprising that the uh, leading uh, city, the main city in this region called Nagypanija, uh, has the highest potential. Okay, it's all right, but it was interesting to see that uh, a small village called Baza Kerekje, which you can uh, spot on the map as a red hotspot area uh, in the center part, you may find it. So it was interesting to see that this city has something more, some, some kind of an added value coming from the, the background of, of uh, heritage. Uh, so here we found uh, some kind of um, uh, confirmation of the spirit of place of Genius Lotsi uh, approach. Well, Baza Keretje is an interesting city because it was the cradle of the Hungarian oil industry. Actually, in 1938, uh, a Hungarian American oil company, uh, Maort and the uh, Eurogasco, uh, found here. Uh, quite great uh, 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 places for mining oil, and it uh, uh, increased its its development potential right in the uh, middle of the 20th century. The heyday uh, was in the 60s, and it's interesting that still existing social cultural cultural heritage uh, is uh, observed there today. For example, I can cite uh, some sentences from uh, Fehir Janos. Uh, the village was infiltrated with a relatively free spirit, an urban lifestyle with children talking with their parents freely, which was strange to many villagers at the time. Everything was available locally, schools, kindergartens, drugstores, thermal bath, cinemas, football pitches, community house, and no one could wish for more. This is not so typical for uh, um, rural villages. New housing estates were built and model houses were built for the engineers, which at the same time mirrored the American style and traditions of Goethe architecture, so the local area architecture. Part of Baza Keret just still looks like an American suburb uh, today. So it's really interesting to show you some, some uh, images. This is uh, from these areas, from Baza Kerekje, image, images of the Hungary Museum of Oil and Gas, and there is still a sense of community culture, local social heritage, mental heritage, and townscape, um, despite the fact that uh, oil industry is uh, no more there. So uh, to, to connect the heritage and creativity aspects, uh, we usually work uh, uh, with uh, you know, famous uh, literatures coming from uh, Grigory Ethward or Silvia Serizola talking about the heritage and creativity approaches. Here you can see many approaches of the heritage, like the cultural industry, tourism industry, location factor, place identify, place product promotion, or uh, economic uh, area, uh, or, or, or generating an economic area by heritage. And also the creativity could be approached by the artistic uh, or scientific or economic point of view. But, well, uh, for all these approaches, craft can work as an integrative tool. So craft gives a multidimensional and territorial synergy in regional development. And to be more concrete, finally, 
Here you can see some examples from an innovative tool for cultural heritage development from CURSEC, from our uh, city. This is what we call the Talking Houses project, uh, uh, led by uh, Monica Matai, who's a researcher here. You may be familiar with her work already. So uh, it deals with stories of the houses, with stories of the local history, by exploring the local micro history connected to uh, uh, specific locations. And this is what, uh, what we call an innovative IT based approach to sustain cultural heritage and to support creative research because it's a creative uh, topic, creative story. On the internet, you may find a map and uh, on clicking the map, uh, you can learn more about uh, local houses, the stories of local houses, which is the creative and heritage part of this development project. Uh, yeah, so we do believe that the preservation of the cultural heritage, this kind of uh, feelings conversation is really important in regional development patterns, and we do uh, implement uh, this kind of approaches in CURSEG. So we have the national pilot project and uh, this includes that besides the research work, we do renovate and retrofitting different kind of uh, houses like the uh, Twinger, um, perhaps you will uh, see it one day and the Arts of um, House of Arts, our Samzu house, which um, became a renovated, really uh, important, beautiful uh, place for the researchers, because these buildings are really essential uh, for the local identity of the uh, inhabitants. And the synagogue uh, will be uh, renovated uh, sooner or later, we believe. And uh, so this kind of uh, heritage uh, valorization is really important because it's uh, fruitful for the whole community in the settlement. Uh, and uh, our institution put much emphasis on the disseminating activities. So we provide different kinds of leaflets and uh, information platforms for the uh, locals and we communicate our development plans and, and activities. This is also part of the engine uh, mechanism. So finally, uh, we both would like to thank your kind attention and um, please join the panel discussion and, and uh, we do believe that uh, you can find us via online and, and um, we are happy to answer the questions. Thank you. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye. Bye.